What we're going to talk about is WordPress for nonprofits, website best practices, collecting donations, increasing exposure online. Um, if that's not what you want to listen to, there's plenty of other sessions going on. Um, a little bit about me, just up front. That is me. Uh, I've been in the IT industry. In 2007, I actually published my first post in 2008 because it terrified me to actually let anybody else see it for the first year, um, which I'm sure if anybody's a blogger understands when that publish button happens, it's a little panic at first. Yep. And got me funny little kid. And the soul sucking key. Medical Solutions came about, which officially got formed in September of 2016. So we just celebrated our. Use my gifts and talents to actually make the world a better place instead of corporations' money. It's primarily small businesses, nonprofits that are doing good locally and globally. Design for nonprofits, if anybody has actually worked with a nonprofit, you know they kind of have a little level, different expectation from their designer than the regular um, is looking for money donations versus necessarily selling products. Which is where WordPress comes into play because WordPress itself is a nonprofit that's actually a CMS that's built for nonprofits to actually collect data and get information for donations to actually get the, to have an email base where they can actually things of that nature to where they can in their happens to be. Um, there are some plugins that I use for most of our sites, which obviously whenever you start taking money online, you want to, you're concerned about security. Whenever you start working on things like global non nonprofits that are in different countries, you need to start working, worrying about spam bots more, more than even in the United States because they're out there and they're out there furious, especially when you start working with com countries. Um, for example, I've worked with uh, a couple of nonprofits, one's in Thailand, one's in Haiti, one's in India, and those have a different audience than what you're used to here in the United States. And so you wanna make sure that you protect it with things like Jetpack, um, Ask me up for spam. Make sure that you use a um, SSL. Um, obviously, Google is pushing everybody to an SSL, but SSL, whenever you want to try to take payments, you want to make sure that it's secure. Um, donation options. There's plenty of them out there. The ones that I've actually had experience with are Give, WooCommerce, Charitable, and obviously PayPal has their own version, which I don't usually turn people to PayPal because it kicks people off of their sites to make payment instead of actually keeping them engaged on the site like the other ones. So I'd actually say to use either Give or WooCommerce or my personal preferences, as well as opt-ins, which is things like Privy, Opt-in Monster, Bloom, depending on which theme and which uh, framework that you're working off of. Um, for example, Bloom works real well with Divi, but it doesn't necessarily play nice with every other application. Um, and that's where you actually utilize those to actually get email addresses so that you can send, send out email campaigns. Um, this time of year, obviously, everybody's gonna be scrambling for email campaigns because you got Giving Tuesday coming up. Um, and if you don't have an email list, you're kind of left sitting dead in the water. Another thing that you need to concern yourself when it comes to design for nonprofits is you have to tell their story a little differently. Um, and it doesn't really matter which industry that you're in, whether it's animals, orphans, human trafficking, environmental, religious, arts and education, healthcare, 
global injustices. They each have a story to tell, and it's your job as a designer to tell that story. Sometimes that means that you actually you're sharing um, pictures, video from that particular, well, that, well, for example, if it was an orphanage, that you're actually sharing information about those people. Um, other times you have to be a little more protective on what you share due to security reasons, but you have to figure out a way to actually engage the reader to open their wallet. And a lot of nonprofits are a little, very guarded on how much they share because they're afraid of that it's going to put them at risk or they're going to be harassed. Or, and so you have to be careful, and that's where content writing comes into play, obviously, as well as you want to make sure that it's, it is something that draws an emotion and empathy with, with your, your, your audience because everybody knows when they see a commercial with a dog in a cage, I mean, you know what you want to do. I mean, it, it draws you in. It's a reason why it draws you in. Um, because it, it's tugging on, your, on your, your tear ducts, and it makes you want to actually do something for them. Um, and the same thing comes with design, where you want to make sure that you've got testimonies and you've actually got personal stories, not just very generalized content that nobody's actually going to attach to. Um, theme choices. And I know there are so many out there that it's hard to decide which ones you want to use. Um, but theme choices do matter because some are actually built better to actually include donate buttons in the proper space, spaces um, as well, unless of course you're using a builder, which gives you a little bit more leeway, um, or you're strictly a, a developer where you can put you know, code in your own place. Some things just are not built for payment options. They're, they're not pay, made that way. They're not built for attractive buttons. Um, and so you have to take that into consideration as well as um, implementing things that make me want to feel sorry for whatever that happens to be. There's a reason why I used the cat. <laughs> um, the next thing you want to take into mind is colors. Because colors when, in any type of design matter. Um, and the, 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 there was actually a really great workshop just before this one where she went into um, the color theories and, and the way that color palettes work. And certain ones invoke certain emotions and invoke certain feelings when you're looking at a website. And that psychology of colors can cost you dollars. Um, up to 90% of the first impressions of products can be used based on color alone. Um, and obviously you've got the scheme of different logos and there's a reason why organizations like ASPCA use orange. Because it, they, they, they feel like there's a warm and fuzzy feeling that you're gonna get when it comes to the puppies and the kittens and you're gonna wanna actually open your wallet for them. Um, there's, there's other ones that obviously invoke different emotions. Um, and, and that's one thing you need to work on when you're working with your client too, because a lot of times they don't understand that. They don't understand, even when it comes to like their logo and things of that nature, how the color scheme of their site can actually invoke whether or not they're actually gonna open up their wallets and have um, a better opportunity to get the donations and, and involvement that they're looking for. Gender, gender appeal is another thing. Um, if the organization happens to be one that is specifically more gender specific, you want to use colors that align somewhat on that palette, but you don't want to exclude anybody by any means. But you want there, that comes into shades and tints, and, and, and there are, there's actually proven science that's out there that, that shows that the logos, as well as the theme design, actually do actually increase engagement depending on what kind of colors and what, whether they're bright colors, soft colors, and palettes and things of that nature are utilized. Um, I will make these slides available later, just so you're aware. You can take pictures all day long, but um, I'll put them out there on my site for you. Uh, another thing that you need to do when you're, when you're working with your, your websites is that you actually know your audience. Um, the first thing I do whenever I spend, spend time with any client is I try to figure out who they are before I ever take them on as a client. Because a lot of times they think they know who their donors are, but when you start actually researching and doing your due diligence, you, and, and you can do things such as analytics and things of that nature, but you actually get to talk to them, you start to figure out who their audience really is, who the people are that they truly are trying to reach. 
Um, because, like I said, many times they don't even know who that happens to be. Does anybody here work with nonprofits? There's a reason why I'm asking this question. Perfect. How would you get to know your audience? Does anybody, if you were meeting with a nonprofit, how would you go about trying to figure out who it is that they serve? Anybody? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Get the right stakeholders in the meeting. Pardon? Get the right stakeholders in the meeting is to, in, instead of, a lot of times when you talk to a, somebody that's looking for web design, for example, they never have the right person that you're talking to. That, hmm? Exactly, and a lot of people, they, they don't even know. They just know that they get money every year, but they, don't, they haven't even looked to see who their current donors are. Um, and a lot of times it'll be where you actually have to get them to go back and do a little bit of research before they can really start a design project because they don't know who their, their donor base is. Um, it's not as easy as, or as intuitive as you would think because everybody donates to different things for different reasons. And a lot of times your audience does end up being a bit different as they break whatever the machine is behind underneath me. Um, I apologize, I went back. Why don't they donate? Um, many times it's because the solicitation is infrequent. They don't know how it's going to make a difference to them. They never feel wanted or needed. You ever donate to somebody and never get a response back? They receive no personalized appeal. They, you, they're just a number to you as far as they're concerned. Um, they gave an, un, an unacknowledged gift in the past. Um, this happens all too often that you have people that donate and they only donate once because you never go back to them and ask them to donate again or you never even thank them to, for the first donation. This is a big one that I've never really figured out, but in speaking with my nonprofits, um, a lot of them seem very hesitant to even ask. And how do you raise money if you don't actually ask them to, to donate? The timing wasn't right. Everybody knows the timing is not going to be necessarily right at that particular time. November and December are big for corporate donations, just in case you're working with nonprofits because they're looking to finish off their tax year. Um, but you ask them in the middle of the summer, they're not going to be so interested because that's not in their radar at that point in time. So campaigns matter. Um, email campaigns, things on your blog, uh, websites and whatnot, they matter because it's the timing for not only you, but for the, your, who your audience is. This, is, this one drives me a little batty. Um, the organization's mission wasn't compelling, or many times it's confusing. You don't really know what it is that they do. Um, and that's where, if you're not a content person, you get somebody that's a content person to actually work with them, work on getting their value prop and their mission statement, and figure out who they really are and how to best verbalize it so that people understand who they are. I got one that's not one. Okay. Mm -hmm. One time reoccurring for, for monthly, and they sign me up for the wrong month, so they never get a donation again until they sign me up. For yep, month. that's a trust issue. Um, because, because obviously, they whoever designed it didn't do it right, or they automatically defaulted you to the wrong one. Yes, sir. Well, and, and a lot of people think where they, they set the minimum donation for. 50 or $100 or whatever. Last time I checked, $5 adds up many times over than $100 would if you have more people that do it. So what I mean is you up too many times. Too many times a year. Um, I, I get a, a piece of mail that comes in the mail probably every four to six weeks asking me for money. And I never even donated to the organization. And it does nothing but infuriate me every time I get it because one, I asked you to, to ask to unsubscribe and yet you keep hitting me up every month or so. Um, optimizing the design for nonprofits. 
Every nonprofit is different, and so are their donors. Um, what that means is the color, theme, search engine optimization, whether you're using local SEO or global, or, or you gotta really figure out who you're serving and, and do your SEO to, to who that audience is because not everybody's gonna be that audience. Um, they have to be mission ready, meaning that the, you need to have the mission up, up in front of them where they know front page what, what they stand for. And they, they need to be able to get social because everybody nowadays is on social media. And if you're not socializing their website, they're missing out on donor dollars. You can now donate, obviously, on Facebook and other, other social medias as well. Um, and most of all, which this goes for any site, content, content, content. And I say that because I have a nonprofit that I'm currently working with. I've, um, the last blog post that they have was in 2017, and that was one I wrote for them. <laughs> it, but, but, and and I've, I've repeatedly tell him, you know, every so often, hey, you need to write, a, he's like, I don't know what to write about. Something, just I mean, put content out there that has to do with your, your organization, or you can pay me to do it, one or the other. Um, but a lot of people, they think that, you know, once they create a site, they're done, and, but there has to be ongoing engagement. Um, prime example, look at most of the nonprofits that are out there, their sites are 10 years old because they haven't really done anything because they feel like they don't have to. Um, and storytelling. This, this comes to the content part where content is king or queen, all depending on who's actually creating it and who the audience is. Stories sell and donors give. Um, the more stories and the more personal you can get, the more people are going to be feel compelled to actually open up and um, donate to you. And the more that you share, the more that they will give. Because if you're not engaging, they're not going to be engaging with you. If you're not sharing about why their dollars matter, they're not going to be compelled to actually um, donate to you. And I say you, meaning your client, of course. And there are some do's and don'ts and best for the best practices of design. Um, like anything else, we got the do's. You gotta make sure that it's easy to navigate. Because if, they're, if they're, it's not easy to navigate, they're gone. Um, and that, of course, goes for any website. Use pictures. Pictures are truly do, I mean, they're, they're worth a thousand words all day long and pictures of whatever the organization is what and whether it's the volunteers working at the organization or the organization itself um, something that actually tells a story about what they do you need to make sure that you optimize optimize the site for speed because people have a trust issue with slow loading sites they're not going to want to donate to a site that loads slow um, and you have to have a clear call to action. Um, make sure that they understand what it is that, that you're asking them to donate to and why. And you have to make sure that's visible to them. And keep it simple. I mean, many, many websites out there nowadays, especially when it comes to nonprofits, they, they are so all over the place that it's too busy that they, you don't really understand what it is that they do or what they want from you. So the simpler that you can keep it, the better. And obviously you want to make sure that you secure it because if it's not secure, um, if it doesn't have that little green light on the Google bar, they're, they're not going to donate to you more than likely. And last but not least for do it, the do's is mobilize. Um, if your site is not mobile friendly, that's where people go for anything nowadays. They see a commercial, they see an ad or whatever, they're going to go on their phone before they go on their laptop. And so you got to make sure that they can actually not only see the site, but they can do the donation on mobile. Um, along with the do's, you got the don'ts. Um, don't hide the donate button. A lot of times it'll be buried on a second page or it'll be buried at the bottom. Make sure that it's above the fold in the menu, top bar where they can see it and, and it's the first thing that they see where it's visible. Um, do not self-play audio and video. I know that was a trend for a while. It was a ridiculous trend, but most people do not like to get blasted with audio or video, it doesn't matter what it is, when they first pop up on a website. Um, bless you. Don't bury the story, meaning put it on front page. If you have a recent testimony from a kid or from, a, from an experience with working with a child or whatever, make sure that it's front and center. Make sure that they 
can see what it is that you're doing. You can have you know, other content throughout the website, but make sure that you have something that's compelling on the front page that actually increases, um, encourages engagement. Don't forget to ask. Again, don't forget to ask. And that means you can ask in multiple places, um, not only above the fold on the top bar, but you know, ask midstream, ask at the bottom, but don't make that button move. A lot of times people make buttons move and where you scroll and the button goes with you. A lot of, people, a lot of times people find that quite annoying um, and they won't be apt to actually engage with you. And don't be scared to ask um, because without asking you're not gonna get. And do not use big picture files that are gonna, that, cause that'll actually slow your site down um, as well as people will bounce off if it's, if it's loading slow. And most of all, when it comes to nonprofits, uh, do not beg. Um, and I say that because I, I actually worked with a nonprofit, and every Christmas they started talking about how they were going to have to euthanize their dogs because the shelter was going to close if they didn't get enough do donations. That kind of fear doesn't increase donations by any means. And so you want, you want to make sure that you're not begging for donations. Um, there's actually a company where I'm from. I'm, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. If you, I, I did not share that earlier. Um, and they are really great in A-B testing and they've done a lot of research as far as what works and what doesn't work, what increases engagement. Um, for example, long form versus short form. Short form. Yeah, I can't talk. If you go short form, you'll you generally you'll increase your engagement by 155% meaning the shorter the post, the better for, for audience um, attention span. If you make fields in an opt-in optional instead of required, that, they show that, that increases by 275%. Now, obviously, you're going to need to capture some data, but making where they have to put in their name, their email address, their, ad, their address, their phone number, all that as a required field will not necessarily get them to actually fill out the form because they feel like you're actually taking too much from them, especially if it's just simply an opt-in for an email often. Um, reduction of eye friction, increase of 135%, meaning when they're scrolling down the page, there's not something that's distracting them from scrolling down the page and reading left to right. There's, there, there's, it's a clean design. Um, you'll end up with an increase of 135%. This is big for donors. The less steps, the better. Um, a lot of times, which PayPal, I used them as an example earlier, if you have to bounce off of something and come back to it, they're not gonna donate, generally. If you have to go to this page and then go to this page and then, lock, then actually send your information, is start, make it a one page thing. Make it where they can check out and do their donation in one spot. You'll, be, you'll have an increase on average of 166% of engagement. Adding simple call to action buttons up front, you get an increase of 246%. If you put it up there in front, in the menu area where they can see it, you'll see a, a significant increase. Um, I did provide the name of the company, which is Mech Labs. Um, like I said, the slides will be available um, and they actually have a, an email subscription for, that is really good for designers and developers that, where they do a lot of business and, and A-B testing and whatnot. Um, it's really great, and, and there's no cost to any of it, which is, which is all, all the better. Um, whenever you are doing design, obviously you want to put in analytics. Analytics matters even more so when you're starting to get into the nonprofit sector because it gets back to knowing who you serve, knowing who the demographic is that you're actually attracting. And um, not only that, but where are they coming from? Are they, are they local? Are they, are they overseas? Um, because that can determine how you start doing campaigns and things of that nature. Heat mapping also comes in. Um, I use Crazy Egg as an example. Um, heat mapping will actually show you what people do on your site. And they will show you what buttons, what things, what, where did they actually go when they were through your site. Um, it is a paid subscription, but it, it is pretty cool as far as the, the information that it can provide for you. Um, email marketing. A lot of nonprofits do very poorly at that. Um, 
where they may do an opt-in, but they never follow up on that opt-in. And so they just got an email address, but they never did anything. There's no campaign. Um, use, use those as a designer. Help design you know, your email campaigns for your clients where use a blog post as a campaign. Use a testimonial as a campaign and where you, you're starting to actually engage the people that donated to you by sharing their story um, through email because they're not necessarily going to always come back to your website unless you bring their attention to your website. Um, funnels. Uh, you can use lead generation for, for that. You can have autoresponders. You can have things of that nature, um, as well as use, utilizing lead pages if you have a certain type of campaign for a certain um, time period that you want to utilize. Um, there's really a lot that, you, that goes along with Nonprofit design that obviously utilize them in any type of design, you just get a little more specific in certain areas when it comes to nonprofits. Um, one thing about nonprofits that I found is your client is the nonprofit, not you. Um, a lot of times they say they don't have the money or they expect it to be free because you advertise yourself as being a freelancer. Well, last time I checked, freelancers, freelancing is not free by any means. Um, and so you have, you have to be able to charge for it and, and charge accordingly. Um, a lot of times they make it seem like they don't have the budget. Well, there's grants and other ways that they can get that budget if you actually set the expectation up front versus just giving away your work. Um, and when you work with a non, with one nonprofit, make sure that you have a plan. Um, set the expectations up front as far as the level of your engagement, um, whether it's truly just you're, you're doing the design and that's it, or you're planning on maintaining and doing campaigns, social media, and things of that nature afterwards. And like I said, make sure that you charge them, um, and charge them accordingly. Doesn't mean you have to charge them the same, but just charge them accordingly. Um, and most of all, uh, when it comes to NPOs, is you have a heart, um, because a lot of times they just want somebody to listen to them and to be able to transfer their story in a, in a way online that they don't know how to do. Um, and if you truly have it, the, the heart for them, it'll show in your design. Um, bless you. Some final thoughts. Uh, use a simple website builder, such as Divi Elementor, Be Beaver, and seem to be uh, that Gutenberg thing. I um, have mixed feelings about. Um, have a strong visual identity. Make sure that their logo is apparent. Make sure it's up front and where they can see it, um, as well as if there's financial charts, anything like that, pictures. Um, make sure it's optimized for mobile devices. Prioritize your online donation forms. Build local content that makes donors donate. Make user engagement a priority. Do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Um, one, one thing I, I, I thought I'm a volunteer developer. I was going to do degree work, but I did it at first. I did it for a local kind of class, and I did it for a trade show. Okay. And um, the question that's always uh, run through my mind for the trade show, because that's the organization that probably has the largest budget of the three, is that what percentage of that budget is a realistic amount? For me, if you go over 10%, the budget, you're probably spending too much. That's a slippery slope. Um, and, and I say that because every, every organization is different on how much they allocate. Um, do you know what their budget is, being that you're a volunteer? To you? I, I was afraid you were going to say that. Um, I, I don't have it. Gotcha. Um, I, I would imagine that they're probably not spending much more than that. But, I mean, like I said, every organization is different, and it depends on where they al align their priorities. Um, and, and good for you for giving away your services, but you may want to start charging. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, obviously know who they serve. Um, their story is, is important. 
Um, and I think most of all, having all the stakeholders, it, not necessarily involved in the initial conversation, but involved up front. Because a lot of times, and this goes to any design, but especially when it comes to nonprofits, they have to go through a board, and, they have, and, they, and a lot of times the boards don't agree or have a clue, no offense, um, of what is involved, and therefore they, without actually being involved in the conversation, they can't have an intelligent um, discussion about it. And have a budget in mind, because even though as a designer, I may say it costs, it's gonna cost you X amount of dollars, but without having at least the conversation of budget, I mean, most designers, well, as me, I can't say, I can't speak for most. As a designer that works with nonprofits, I generally will adjust somewhat, um, depending on it. Um, and have a vision, have a vision where you wanna go. That's the, that's the biggest thing because a lot of times they come in and say, I need a new website, but they don't know what that means. Have ideas, have you know, samples of, of things that you like, things that you don't like, that, that kind of stuff. Um, have a color scheme if you, if you have that. Um, certain things like, you know, even simple stuff like fonts, if there's a certain one that you like. I may tell you, you're not, you're not right about it. But... <laughs> right, right, exactly. And see, that's, that's perfect because a lot of times they don't even know who their brand is to even have brand guidelines. Um, and the more information that you can bring up front, to me, is, will make the process a lot easier, especially ongoing. I had a question over there, and I'll come back to you. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, I think the biggest thing, in the, and for me, a misconception is those small donations add up if, if you can get the engagement. Um, because granted, they may not add up to a $50,000 donation in one year, but the reciprocal effect is you may get $25,000 every year for the next 10 years when you only got $150,000 for one year. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a long game, because you have to really gain the donor's trust. And the more you gain their trust, the more they start to donate. And it may be where they're only donating, you know, $10 a year or whatever. Um, also, do you have reoccurring donations implemented? Um, that's helpful because a lot of times they'll sign up for it and forget about it, which is a blessing because it's just something that you can count on every month or every year, whichever the case may be. Um, and the biggest thing I would think is also being able to look in at the numbers and see how much the website truly is generating um, and do a comparison versus the, the large and see if you can actually justify your campaigns that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I have a client recently asked me, she paid me up front for the balance. The balance she wants to do it and she wants me to wait for the donation to get the balance. Run. Run. <laughs> yeah, well, and, 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 I, and I say that, and, I, and I've even had that in the for-profit sector, where they're like, well, I want you to do half of it now, and then I'll do the rest of it whenever I start getting money. Exactly. I, I, you can't run a business like that. Um, and unfortunately, nonprofits are businesses, whether they realize it or not. And you have to, you have to I mean, it's obviously whatever you're willing to work with, but I would, I would run. <laughs> I, I have one time, time for one more question. I have not personally had experience with that, but I'm intrigued. 